laughing upon you though you have not yet understood the shame if you are fed with God's knowledge if you are fed with God's understanding then the new man in you will prosper what kills the new man in you whenever the new man is not fed the shores the kingdom is coming
lost its victory and the grave has been denied Jesus lives forever
bring all my sin and shame in love you came and gave amazing love thank you for this love Lord I thank you Lord me in your blazing blood now all I know is your forgiveness sad every is worthy worthy is the love seated on the throne Oh, 
the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Yes, you are all most welcome in the precious presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, today is Easter. Today is Resurrection Day. This is what I know that God is going to resurrect a lot of things in your lives in Jesus' name. Let's put together our hands and welcome the online church in Jesus' name. Yes, wherever you're watching us from, you're welcome in the presence of God. Today is Easter. We've come to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what I know that God is going to release His life wherever you are in the name of Jesus Christ. Easter is about God releasing His life unto the world. And the life that God gives us makes us to become overcomers over every principalities and powers. Let's lift up those hands, everyone, and let's begin to worship the Lord. Worship Him in the language you understand best. Glorify His name. Praise Him. You are worthy, my God, to receive all the glory, the praise, and the honor unto the Lamb that was slain. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Jesus. Yes, just go ahead and worship him. Ribata kate rebobo and debre del sheke te brunda basa kataka boya. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise for today in Jesus' name. Let's put together our hands and praise the Lord. You are welcome, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God in this place. Angels of God, come and minister with me. And also unto this lovely people of God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Let's give God the praise. Let's glorify His name. Let's praise His name. He's worthy to be worshipped. He's worthy to be adored in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, you may be seated. Many, many times people begin to celebrate Easter like what we're going to do today or like what you're going to do today without knowing the background that brought Easter into existence even up to now. Of all days, why do we celebrate Easter? First of all, Easter, Easter is the day of Jesus resurrecting, coming from the grave. And the question comes, what takes Jesus to the grave? How does he reach to the grave? And how about, how, do, how is he, why is he raised from the dead? Many times when you don't know the genesis of something, you may not understand and know the implication, especially which is a spiritual implication that is behind what you're doing. And many times when you don't have knowledge of what is happening or what you're doing, you may not do something right. You may do it as a celebration like today. People, I can see every one of you, you're dressed smart. You're looking good. You've made up yourself. Now, is it about what you're doing or what you've done over yourself to look good? Is it about to dress smart and to eat and to have good time with family and friends? It goes beyond that. There is a spiritual implication behind Easter, behind the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And today, we're going to see the power that is there of in resurrection. How come Jesus died? What led him to die? How come he rose up again? You can't talk about resurrection without talking about the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you can't talk about the death of our Lord Jesus Christ without talking about the crucifixion. Why he went to the cross. You can't talk about the crucifixion. You can't talk about the death of Jesus without talking about crucifixion. And you can't talk about crucifixion without talking about what brought Jesus in this world. And also, you can't talk about what brought Jesus in this world without knowing the beginning of heaven and us. How did it happen? Why did God create heaven? Why did he create the earth? So that is what we're going to look at. This is what we're going to look at. Then you must understand where the resurrection derives its power from. So in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1, the Bible says that in the beginning, God created heaven and us. Now when God created heaven and us, what was next? When God created, the heavens came before the earth. He created heaven first. So when he finished creating heaven, 
then he created the earth we see in the book of Psalms chapter 8 in the book of Psalms chapter 8 beginning from verses 4 it is like a conversation that is taking place between the angels this conversation that is taking place between the angels they begin to ask what is man that you're mindful of and the son of man that you visit him now they don't understand why God is so mindful of man the reason as why God is so mindful to man is because he created man in the image of God you and I were created in God's image and also were created in God's likeness man looked more like God and what made God create man remember that heavens were created first and in heaven you, you there was God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and there were also angels who are in heaven and part of these angels who are a third of them as Revelation says chapter 12 verses 4 they were led into disobedience they were led into disobedience by Lucifer and when they were led into disobedience there was war that broke out in heaven that is what Revelation 12 says beginning from verses 7 and then Lucifer fought against angel Michael but he couldn't prevail and because he couldn't prevail he was thrown now on the earth remember that God had created the earth now when he created the earth and the devil is thrown on the earth he made the earth to be void he made the earth to be empty he made the earth to be empty he made it to be formless that is when God never created more angels to replace the side of the angels that had gone out of heaven what he did he created man so when he created man he gave man his creation he gave man the earth that is why the Bible says in the book of Psalms 115 verses 16 in NIV version that the highest heaven belong to the Lord our God and the earth he has given it to mankind so now when God gave the earth to mankind in the book of Psalms where we are chapter 8 verses 5 see what God did then God crowned man with glory and honor then verses 6 the Bible says in the in the Bible says and he made him to have dominion over the works of his hand and he put all things under his feet so now the devil has lost position in heaven and now the earth that is created where the devil is thrown God can't allow him to have any position in it he created the earth and the earth brought forth because the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 3 and God said let there be so what the word of the Lord that came out of him which was the creation word it had life in it and it began to create the things that were created from the earth is where we see the world being formed up so as the world begins to be formed up from the earth what the devil did is to come and attack and steal what God had given man remember now he has no place yes he's thrown on the earth but God can't allow him to be on the earth he can't allow him to be on the earth so he gives the earth to man that is why scripture has said that the highest heaven belong to the Lord our God and the earth he has given it unto mankind in NIV version so this devil who is thrown from the earth when he attacked man he attacked man by making man sin and when man sinned man disobeyed against what the Lord had spoken unto his life now we see the entrance of sin in the world so when sin entered the world that is how the devil began to control this world and also man himself because now man fell short of the glory of God which is this glory that man fell short of as the Bible says in the book of Romans 3 23 the glory that man fell short of was the authority which was given unto man through the dominion and rule of every creation that God had put in his hands because as the psalmist is saying in Psalms chapter 8 
verses 6 that when man has been crowned with glory and honor in verses 5 verses 6 God has given him dominion over the works of everything he created now that is what the devil stole when God, when the devil stole what man was given the authority that man had now the devil took it over in the book of Luke chapter 4 verses 6 when Jesus has come in this world see what the devil begins to tell him he begins to tell him that all this authority I'll give you and their glory for it has been delivered unto me and I give it to soever I wish how did he get it he got it through lies because when he lied man and man and man responded or heeded to the lies that the devil had told him this is how man surrendered the authority the glory that God had given him so from that time when man surrendered his authority to the evil one that means that the world the creation that came out of the earth and everything that the earth had given up and to creation which God had given unto man now this was in control of the evil one because it was in control of the evil one see what God did this is when the redemption plan comes in the redemption plan of God had to come in because man God couldn't destroy man had God destroyed man that means God was gonna destroy himself because man was created in God's image and also after the likeness of God that means God destroying man he was gonna destroy himself so what he had to do is to make sure that he puts a plan that can bring back what has been taken from man the son of God had also to be in place or in the plan of redemption why because in the beginning of creation in the beginning of creation he was the word that came out from the mouth of God as John says the word was with God and the word was God so through him all things were made now from the beginning because Jesus was also inclusive in creation of the earth that God had given over to man and yet the devil had taken it so God had to put him in the plan of redemption so when God put him in the plan of redemption what was the purpose as to why Jesus was in the plan of redemption it was because Jesus was gonna come as a son of man as the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 19 verses 10 to come and seek and save that which was lost that means now the devil began to hide from man what belonged to him that means now the devil began to have control of what was given unto man this is when man begins to enter a lot of problems this is when a lot of things begin to happen around the life of man man can no longer be as he used to be man is suffering the world is suffering creation goes into bondage of decay as Romans chapter 8 verses 19 says creation enters into corruption it is a though that God has got nothing to do with what he created so when the redemption plan came in Jesus had to come with freedom he had to come to rebellate the world and man from the hands of the enemy this is what brings Jesus as the Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life so that means that the redemption plan of God had to lead Jesus to the cross there was no way God was going to bring freedom and liberty without the cross there was no way God was going to bring freedom and liberty without death because the cross where Jesus was put at the cross this is where Jesus had to stand to fight against the condemnation and the accusation of what the devil had put upon the world so the first Adam because he lost it he lost what God had given him to the devil the devil used to stand upon what Adam did he would condemn he would accuse because he knew it very well now sin has come 
into the world through one man and the bible says in the book of romans chapter 5 verses 18 in nlt version that adam's one sin he just did only one sin but this one sin of adam brought condemnation for everyone that means that every day the devil was condemning people every day the devil was condemning the world but i want you to understand this the bible continues to say but also Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and a new life for everyone. So what brings Christ is to bring back the relationship man had with God. What brings Christ is to bring a new life. And that is the other side of God that devil never knew. Every day what the devil knew that provided, provided man is a sinner. There is no way he's going to have a relationship with God. The devil knew it very well. Provided sin is in the world. There, is, there will never be any relationship of God with the world. But in the midst of sin, in the midst of condemnation, in the midst of accusation, Christ comes. So Christ, what, what brings Christ to establish the righteousness of God unto men and to this world? So Christ was going to be led to the cross. And when we talk about the cross, the cross was about the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. So at the cross, Jesus was crucified. And from crucifixion, that is where the death of Jesus Christ manifests. That means there was no way Christ was going to die apart from him dying from the cross. Remember when he was still a child, they wanted to kill him. But because it, the cross, it was not through the cross, he couldn't die until he had to be taken to the cross. Why to the cross? The Bible says in the book of John chapter 19 verses 30 that when Jesus Christ reached at the cross, the Bible says the first thing he said, it is finished. What is that that Jesus said it is finished? You know, all the accusation, all the power of sin, the failure of man, the trouble, the problems that man had gone through, that is what Christ finished at the cross. There was an end of the devil. And child of God, this is what I want you to understand. And the devil knows it very well, that at the cross, that is where his works are finished. At the cross, that is where his power is lost. He knows it very well, because at the cross, that is where Christ paid it all. Every generation that the devil took into bondage, the imprisonment of of spirits the imprisonment of life from generation to generation that the devil had taken into prison at the cross when christ reached the cross that is where the finished work of jesus christ was seen so at the cross he said it is finished so when he said it was when he said it was finished because he had finished the work the bible says he gave up his spirit now paint a picture when he gave up his spirit, what happened? The Bible says, then darkness came and covered the earth. This is when the devil celebrated. He thought now, yes, God has never been in flesh. Today we have finished him. He's in flesh. We have killed him. He will never become anything. He never knew that that is where the victory of man and the world began from. We begin our journey of salvation from the cross we begin our new lives from the journey of the cross so at the cross when the devil saw that he has crucified jesus he has finished him he has given up his spirit see what happened christ was put to death in flesh in other words it is the body that the devil inflicted but he never inflicted the spirit he never held the spirit that is why christ was made alive by the spirit so that means whatever the devil did he did it on the body of jesus christ but the question comes why the body because the body belonged to this world the body represented the world the body represented man that means the shedding of his blood the piercing of his body what he was the, the stripes he was striped everything that was done the crown of nails that was put upon his head all that was the body in other words he got all the sin he got all 
the failure of man. He got all the weakness of man and put it upon his body. And when the devil was busy hitting the body, it was himself who was crucifying himself because it is the devil who brought pain. It is the devil who brought sickness and disease. It's the devil who brought sin. So that means whatever the devil was doing to the body, he was doing it to himself. So when all this happened, and Christ realized now the devil has been paid. He gave up his spirit. So when he gave up his spirit, that is when he died. And from the level of death is when God glorifies himself more than ever before. That is the other side of God, child of God, I want you to understand. You as a child of God, it is very possible that there are very many things you've gone through in life. But do you know what you call problems, what you call pain, what you call condition, what you think that you've gone through that is so terrible. In the same things is where God stands to glorify himself. He did it once, he can do it again. And that is what I want you to understand from today. What you've seen going through in life, what you thought has been pain, conditions and challenges and situations around you because of resurrection. That is what God is going to use to glorify himself in your life. That is what God is going to use to bring testimony unto himself in Jesus' name. So from the level of the cross, when he has died, see what happens. The Bible says in First Peter chapter 3 verses 18. Now this is the other side of God the devil never knew. Because if the devil knew it, he wouldn't have crucified Jesus. If the devil knew it, he wouldn't have killed Jesus. Now turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor, if the devil knew it, he wouldn't have attacked you. So he attacked you and as he attacked you, you became saved. Now because you're saved, because of resurrection, you watch and see what the Lord is about to do for you. The Lord is going to bless you. The Lord is going to turn around your life. The Lord is going to do great things today. There is a new life you're going to enter in Jesus' name. Somebody lift up those hands and say, I'm entering a new life. No louder than that, say in the name of Jesus, I'm entering a new life. Yes, you are going to enter a new life for sure in Jesus' name. And this life you're going to enter is going to be a life of testimony. It's going to be a life of miracles. There is a life that God now has entered. The devil has never seen someone who has gone into death becoming alive. The devil has never seen someone who has gone into death doing greater things. The devil has never heard that you can go in the grave and leave the grave victorious. So the Bible says in First Peter chapter 3 verses 18 in IV version after being made alive remember he gave up his spirit at the cross so when he gave up his spirit where did the spirit of Jesus go where did it go when he gave up his spirit the Bible says in NIV version of first Peter 3 18 having been made alive he went and he preached can you imagine in the grave as people are busy crying fear is all over the world people don't know what is next yet in the grave Jesus is on the mission what was he doing in the grave he went to the grave so that he preaches to spirits in prison that means what takes Jesus is to set free whosoever from the generation of Adam up to the time he came that was in sin or died in sin that was bound in sin that is what took jesus he went to that level to preach to all those spirits to be free today i'm here to say you're receiving liberty you're receiving freedom in the name of jesus christ you're gonna be free they may think that you have died. They may think that you are a nobody. But I want you to understand that resurrection brings liberty. Resurrection brings freedom. You are going to be free. You are going to have your freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. And then you are going to begin to live that life of dominion. You are going to begin to live that life of rule in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when he went, he began to preach in prison. Look at verses 20. Verses 20 says in NLT version that those who disobeyed God 
long when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. So what does that mean? There was that generation from Adam up to Noah and up to the generation until Jesus came. Those who are disobedient. Remember, that was the pride of the devil. He had prison rooms where he had put these spirits in hell where he had bound them because God deals with righteousness. The devil knew it very well. Hell is populated. I have spirits. He would look around. He would see people who died of poverty. He would see people who died of sickness and disease. He would see people who died struggling. He would see people who died in sin. And the devil was very proud. He was like, yeah, this is the creation of God. See what I've done to it. He was ever proud. He had keys of prisons. He had keys of hate he was so happy because now he thought that he has achieved what he wanted to show God that his creation now is in the hands of the devil to show God that what you made is in my hands now God said no problem he went up to the generation of no remember no comes the generation of no comes from Abraham it comes from Adam so that is why he went but can you imagine Christ Jesus was crucified on Friday. So the mission he had was only three days. And I'm here to declare in the name of Jesus, the same is going to happen to you. In three days, you must resurrect. In three days, you must have a new life. In three days, you must receive what you lost. In three days, you're going to become better. What the devil did for generations, Christ did it in three days. Can I repeat that again? What the devil did for generation. First of all, the first man who's called Adam, who sinned. The Bible says that Adam lived for 930 years. Now can you imagine? 930 years. Add on other generation. You think how many years were those? So many years. So many years and I'm here to say the devil may have done things for years and years probably in your life in your lineage in your family over people's lives but it does not take God years to rebellate you it does not take years for God to give you freedom it takes God only three days to fight against things that have been there in generations and generations so from all those generations that Satan had imprisoned through disobedience and through sin. In three days, he went and preached. In three days, he went to set them free. That is why the death of Jesus Christ resulted into hell being shaken and defeated. The devil never likes such a day like this. Because he knows what happened. On the third day, which is today that we are celebrating of Easter, Jesus rose again. But before he rose, he went to the grave. When he went to the grave, what took Jesus to the grave is to shake and also to defeat the devil. Today, I'm here to say, God is going to shake. Whatever is not godly out of your life, it must be shaken. Somebody shake your hands like that and shake in the name of Jesus. Whatever is not godly in my life, is going to be shaken and it's going to be defeated. So child of God, this is what I want you to know. You are not going to leave this place with what has been holding you. You are not going to leave this place when the devil is alive in your life. Whatever is not godly, today it must be shaken. Today it must be defeated. And this is what resurrection is about. Resurrection brings the new life of God unto man and even unto the world. You are living the presence of God with a new life. You are living the presence of God when you are better than before in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what Jesus did, he went and shook hell. He went and shook and defeated. He did not only shake, but also he defeated. And when he defeated hell, he had to rise. So crucifixion led to death and death of Jesus Christ led to resurrection. 
no one has ever resurrected from the dead apart from our Lord Jesus Christ no one we hear of Lazarus yes he resurrected him from death but he died again we hear of very many religious people who die and never rise up again but today as I speak he is alive and Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father which shows you that he has power over death in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when he shook hates, when he shook hell, what did he get out of shaking hell? What he got out of shaking hell he got the keys. Somebody shout and say, today I'm receiving my keys. Yes, you're going to receive your keys to your breakthrough. You're going to receive your keys to success. You're going to receive your keys to your testimony. You're going to receive your keys to your miracles. Today, there must be keys that are handed over to you. Resurrection is not just about Jesus resurrecting. Resurrection is about you receiving keys. What told you know that has been closed against your life? Where has your life been? Today, get ready. As hell was shaken, it was defeated. But watch this. As Christ rises, because today we are celebrating the resurrection of Christ Jesus. As he arose, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 8. I am he who lives. <laughs> I am he who lives. Who was dead. And behold, I am alive forever. I stand to prophesy. There is a you who is about to give testimony. You will stand and say, I am a he who came on resurrection day on foot. But now because of resurrection, I can drive myself. I am a he who was once poor. But now because of resurrection, I'm going to be rich. There is a you whom the world has seen before. But there is also a you who is going to resurrect. God is going to resurrect you. God is going to raise you up. There is a new you, you, you. He stands and says, I am a he who was dead. And behold, now I am alive forevermore. And when he said that, what is so interesting, when, oh my God, when John saw such a revelation, even the angel who was revealing to him what heaven is about, they had to put an amen. So what what does that mean? There is an amen that God is going to put upon your life. As you're busy telling your story, as you're busy talking about where God has brought you from, people are going to see an amen upon you. What does amen mean? Amen at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 20 says, it is yes to the promises of God. I am here to declare, if there is any promise of God over your life, today it must come to pass. If God has said, if God God promise you, you are going to step into God's promises in your life and you are going to become an amen. Even before you finish your testimony, people will be shouting and saying amen. Yes, that is what God can do in your life. Yes, that is what God said over your life. Paint a picture. This man, Jesus, who before was called a man of a carpenter, a son of a carpenter, this man, Jesus, whom people even one time as Philip as in John chapter 1 verses 46 can anything good come out of Nazareth now all oh, that is history today he has the keys he has authority child of God get ready there is a new life you're gonna enter in Jesus name what they knew about you before it's not what they're gonna see after today today you are rising today is resurrection today you must resurrect in power in anointing in finances in holiness you must resurrect today in your potential you must resurrect today there is a new you the world is gonna see there is a new you who will be having testimony all over you go wherever you go in Jesus mighty name so he stands and says I have the keys of hate and death 
That means when he went to the grave, it is not that he had died. He went to fight the battle. Today is a fighting day. You are fighting against your past. You are fighting against whatever has been an hindrance in your life. And by the time you come out of the presence of God, you will say, I am he who lives. Yes, you will live. You will live better. You can be married. You can be anointed. You can be holy. You can be blessed. You can be rich. You can have a house of your own. You can come out of all those prisons in Jesus' name. Jesus left the prison rooms of the devil empty. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, there is nothing that can keep you in prison. There is nothing that can keep you in the grave. Your grave is giving you up. What you've been believing God for, get ready. It's going to be a yes. It's going to be an amen in Jesus' mighty name. There is a better you. There is an anointed you. There is a rich you whom the world is going to see in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout amen in Jesus' mighty name. Now, whosoever was in disobedience from generation to generation, whosoever was in sin, Jesus in three days set everyone free. In three days. What took the devil long for Jesus? Friday on the cross, Saturday in the grave, and Sunday is alive. Today, that is the same Jesus who we are going with that Jesus who gives godly lives, that Jesus who overcame grave, the grave, who overcame death, and who overcame the devil and hell, is the Jesus you are with. He's going to make you overcome in Jesus' name. Lift up those hands and say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to be an overcomer. So now he's standing with the keys. He has the keys of hate. He has the keys of death. That is when in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18, he stands and says that all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So child of God, you must understand this. God created you to have a relationship with him and to stand right with him so that you have authority in heaven and on the earth. And one thing that I love about Jesus when he realized that it was his time to descend, to ascend and go to heaven, he never left the world empty. He never left man and the world empty. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, as I'm about to close, chapter 4, verse 7. See what the Bible says. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 7, but to each one of us, grace was given. So that means now, as Christ is going, he leaves his grace behind so that grace can help people. So that from that time, resurrection, what resurrection does for man, for you not to struggle or for you not to do things in your own ability. There is what they call the grace of God that is sufficient for you, that enables you to do what you can do on your own. So grace was given to each one of us. And the Bible continues to say, and we are given according to the measure of Christ's gift. That means as grace came, also the gifts of God were left with man. You have gifts, I have gifts. So when we operate in grace and these gifts that God gave us, the devil is far from us. The devil now can no longer come to you directly. He must use cunning ways. He must hide himself because he has no authority to reach where you are because of resurrection. So as the gifts were given unto us and also the grace of God, now see what is amazing. Verses 8 See what scripture says. In, N, in NIV version, let's take it from NIV. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that when he is ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. Now watch this. What does New King James Version say? New King James Version says, Therefore, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. These gifts that we operate in, 
like a man like me today I wouldn't have stood to preach the gospel I preach it because of the grace like you was looking at me you wouldn't have been in church today but grace brought you in church I don't want you to think problems led you into salvation I don't want you to think circumstances and challenges brought you in church no way the grace of God and because of the grace you are what you are today in God so this grace also brings the gifts of God into man now man can operate as Jesus used to operate when we heal the sick when we preach the gospel when we set people free we are doing what Jesus did now we have the image of Christ in us we have that life of Christ in us and because of that captivity of the evil one must be taken captive now, if you know of any captivity, today, any captivity that you know must go into captive. Can you imagine whatever, whatever you know that brings captivity into people's lives, today, it is made captive. If you know witchcraft, that witchcraft disorganizes people, today witchcraft is going to be made captive. If you know of anybody or enemies who make people to be captive, to enter into captivity, God, when he was ascending, Jesus, when he was ascending, see what he did for us. He led captivity into captive. That means the devil has no power over you. Principalities and powers of the evil one have no power over you. They are all put into captivity and they are taken captive because of resurrection. That means you can live a life of freedom. You can live a life of liberty. Because Christ has all authority. All authority has been given unto Christ in heaven and us. And also what Christ has done, his authority, he has given it unto us. That is why John says, John chapter 1 verses 12, that as many as received him, to them he gave them authority. Which kind of authority do you have? Which kind of authority do you dwell in? The Bible says in the book of Matthew, if you may turn with me in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 19. What does the Bible say? This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, and I will give you. Remember he has the keys now. The keys he has, he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on the earth, will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on the earth will be loose in heaven child of God it is time to lose your blessings your prosperity your healing your miracles because the keys that were taken from the devil now they've been given unto you you can do anything in God that is godly and it can happen in your life it can happen in this world it can happen upon this earth in Jesus' mighty name. Lift up those hands and say, Lord Jesus, my time is now of greatness. Now when Christ rose as I finish from the dead, he has all authority. But I want you to understand this as I'm closing. The authority, he passed it unto us. We also have keys. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 9, as I'm closing, see what the Bible says. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. Today, I am here to declare, if you know of any name that is above, that is above, that is above that is above any name that name is the name of Jesus does cancer have a name does poverty have a name or luck there is a name of Jesus that is above every name the name of Jesus has been exalted above every name so every name that you know that has brought you probably tears and struggling in life because of resurrection the name of Jesus is above all those names. Do you know that every challenge has a name? Every condition has a name. Whatever you go through in life has a name. But there is a name that is above. The name of Jesus has authority over every name. So if you operate 
in the name of Jesus that means you're above situations and challenges you are above every other name but that name of Jesus is gonna make you better that name of Jesus is bringing God the life into your life at the name of Jesus verses 10 what does the Bible say every knee shall bow in heaven and those on us and even under the earth today I stand to declare in Jesus name let everything bow down to the name of Jesus in your life in Jesus mighty name let poverty bow down let luck bow down let scarcity bow down let everything bow down at the name of Jesus so when things bow down what does that mean and if we have this name what does that mean in the book of Psalms where we began from as I close chapter 8 verses 6 when God created man the Bible says from verses 5 that God crowned man with glory and honor and then verses 6 this is what scripture says man was given dominion over the works of the hands of God and he put everything under his feet because of resurrection man is taken back to that position today child of God you don't need to seek for things things must be under your feet in Jesus mighty name there are things you never had in life before there are things you've been seeking in your life before but I want you to understand this because of resurrection things must be at your feet and what does that mean when something is at your feet you are the master God created man to be the master in this world you are the master in this world he created you to be above in this world you are not a loser you are a master of God's creation if you believe it clap those hands to Jesus and give him praise now lift up those hands and say Lord Jesus I want to thank you for resurrection I am taking my position of dominion of rule I'm resurrecting right now in Jesus name arise everybody arise everybody in Jesus name lift up those hands and say in the name of Jesus I arise right now in my place of dominion in my place of rule he's alive he's alive
believe that Christ Jesus is alive. Now somebody shout and say, Jesus, you are alive. Jesus, you are alive. Louder than that. Jesus, you are alive. Now listen to this child of God because this is what God is about to do in the next minutes in your life. And after today, because in three days, things are going to happen in your life. In three days, Jesus defeated the devil. In three days, Jesus brought life unto the whole world. In three days, what the devil had denied the world, the world received it after Jesus was alive. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 11, because he's alive. Somebody shout and say, Jesus is alive. Now see what the Bible says. But if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give your mortal bodies life through his spirit who lives in you. Now child of God, listen to me. Because he's alive, that spirit that raised him from the dead, that couldn't allow him to be a poor Jesus, that couldn't allow him to be called this boy from Nazareth, it raised him up. It gave that spirit, gave him authority and power. It's the same spirit today that is inside of your life. That means from today, no one is going to bewitch you and overcome you. No one is going to talk about you and make you a nobody. The more they talk about you, the greater you're gonna become from today you're not gonna be defeated you are also gonna arise and shine that is what resurrection is about the spirit that rose Christ from the dead is the same spirit in you you can't stay poor anymore you can't be in luck anymore there is a spirit that raised Christ from the dead who is inside of you that can't even allow the devil to touch you anymore if you believe it shout and say it's Alive. alive so child of God don't think you're gonna say like that there is a spirit that is gonna raise you up you can drive a car you can own your own house you can be anointed you can be blessed you're not gonna die of coronavirus you're gonna be promoted at your place of work things are gonna change that is the life you're entering in after today because of resurrection you're gonna be an overcomer your enemies are gonna be under your feet there is a spirit in you it is the spirit of God. I'm not talking about the spirits that people see over other people. I can see a snake spirit. No way. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit who went into the grave and brought Jesus from the dead and rose him up again. You are going to become a billionaire. Though you have been poor, you're going to become rich. You're going to become blessed. You're going to become better. That spirit is in you. And because he dwells in you, he's going to give you life. There is a life you must live, child of God. An exalted life. There is a life you must live, child of God. A godly life. You are not going to fall sick. You are not going to die before your time. You must do what God has called you to do before you die. But spirit that raised Christ from the dead. He's going to make your marriage better. He's going to make your children study. But spirit that rose Christ from the dead. He's going to do great things in your life. If you believe it, shout and say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Jesus is alive. Yes. Death has lost its victory. And the grave has been denied. In the name of Jesus. Jesus lives forever.
Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Yes, it's time to give our tithes and offerings in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is Easter Sunday. Wherever you're watching us from, there is a number on the screen where you can give your tithes, where you can give your offerings in Jesus' name. Yes, it's alive. Everyone just get out of your tithes and give your tithes in Jesus' name. It's the Alpha and Omega. Yes, it's alive. Hallelujah. Father, bless your people as they give. Yes, go ahead and give. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus lives yes, forever. yes. Wherever you're viewing us from, there is a ministry number where you can give your tithes in Jesus' name. Yes. Everyone, get a hold of your offering and give in Jesus' name. Your resurrection offering. Yes, you can give your resurrection offering in Jesus' name. The Lamb of God is risen. Is alive. He's alive. Everyone get a hold of your seed and plant your seeds in Jesus' name. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you can give your seeds in the name of Jesus. Father, bless your people. Let your people arise and shine in Jesus' name. Yes. Today is a day of change. Everyone get a hold of your change offering and give your change offering in Jesus' name. Yes, every Sunday we give this prophetic change offering. Everyone just get a hold of your change offering and give it in the name of Jesus. He's alive, yes. You can give in Jesus' name. Somebody shout and say he's alive. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. May you go in this resurrection power. May you receive a new life of God. May you arise and shine in Jesus' name. Let's give Jesus the praise. Let's give Jesus the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, before we say the grace, next Sunday is going to be an incredible Sunday. Even you are watching us, next Sunday is going to be our Thanksgiving Sunday in Jesus' name. Wow. We are coming back to thank God. I know we've gone through a lot, but God is faithful. Even you are watching don't miss this day. So on top of your tithes and offerings and seeds, just get a special Thanksgiving offering and come with it in the presence of God. We have only one service on Sunday. We're going to be beginning at 10 and we shall end at 1.30. And the good thing, the man of God is going to be with us in the service and it's going to be incredible. So come with your friends, come with your family. It's going to be incredible in Jesus' name. Today is resurrection day. May God bless you. May God prosper you. Yes. Our lovely friends who are watching us all over the world. May God bless you. 
May God give you a better life after today because it's risen. But on Sunday, we are thanking God. We are coming to give our thanksgivings unto the Lord. God has taken us through a lot of things. And in such a season every day as a minister in the church, we sang God's song. Join with us and celebrate with us. And let's, let's thank God together in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The grace. Fed. 